games advertise somewhat more like blockbusters today, whether you imagine that due to the ability of games to tell stories, whether they'll ever be marketed like literature. Okay, games marketed like literature. Nicholas? There is an age-old debate around whether or not games are art. I mean, of course they probably are, but um, so <laughs> moving, on, moving, moving on from that. Um, games actually, I don't think, are terribly good at telling stories. They're, they're very good at allowing people to tell their own stories. That's what they're better for. So my preference would be for the games industry to stop worrying about whether or not it's as good as film or as good as books. Because it's not, it's different, and that's its job. So, one, I think it might start becoming part of the literature in the same way that it is becoming part of the blockbuster. I hope it doesn't, because I think it's missing the point of all the stuff that's brilliant about games, the, the, the worlds they create, the environments they create, um, and the stories which they allow to be told rather than tell. Okay, I mean, does anyone else want to comment on this? We had a great debate um, at City not that long ago between two authors and two publishers, which was fascinating and comes back to the story because it was really about how stories are marketed. And the two authors, one of them had uh, left Harper Collins because she'd written books which she felt had been wrongly presented mm -hmm. as, as romance or chick lit. And they, they were, both authors had some extraordinary stories, uh, including involving glitter. Um, and they really <laughs> and, <laughs> Great, Marianne. 
Um, I, I, yes, all of that. And to say, um, I think there's a sense in which the MAs are truly vocational in the sense of helping you to test your own vocation. And most of the people who come to most of the MAs at the beginning of the year probably say they wanted to be an editorial in fiction, the vast majority of them. Um, and what happens in the course of the year is people discover things they didn't know existed, like rights and, and marketing, and they, they, they might have sat down in an editing workshop and discover that the loneliness of the long distance editor is not for them, and, and they can't punctuate. Um, <laughs> and, and also, they may well discover that, that what they thought was going to be wonderful about the, the fiction world actually um, is not nearly as interesting as what they might go into in an academic or an educational publishing job. And you can really only discover that by to some degree for curious experience, people like me telling them, that there doesn't seem to make much difference. People coming mm -hmm. in from the industry telling them that makes more difference. And people, when they're on placement, seeing and experiencing that makes much more, much more difference. So if, if, I think you can more easily get a job in academic publishing than you can in trade publishing without an MA now, because you have to have much more going for you to get a job in trade publishing. You don't need one for either, but uh, I think it's useful for both. Great. Amanda? Yes, um, I'm obviously sitting between two people who run the MAs in publishing. Um, I, think it, I think it's brilliant. I mean, clearly, if you're bright enough to do an MA, that's fantastic, and you're obviously going to be intellectually inquiring. And I still have to be convinced about how, how the real practical transition is from MA, and I know it's not a vocational course, it's an intellectual course, so that's a different thing. Um, I, I also, I slightly, I have to say, being frank, I have, to, I worry that if you have an MA in publishing, and I have no evidence, in fact, I have a wonderful um, person in the audience who is a brilliant member of my team who happens to have an MA in publishing, uh, with, um, from, uh, <laughs> from her with Alison, and she's just marking her um, uh, dissertation, you know, as we speak. Um, so, so I wouldn't like to cast nasturtiums in any way about MAs. I just think that, what we cannot do is if we have an MA, and I haven't got one, so obviously I'm jealous, we can't then be far too proud and think we need to be CEO in, in uh, day three. And so I was slightly worried by the, the, you know, there are lots of jobs and don't accept very, very low wages. Of course, I understand that. Um, but, you know, we have to be honest about how, I mean, I, mean, I know I sound like a doctor and the junior doctors, and so if I worked hard, then they should all work, you know. As a week at least on Saturdays and all that kind of thing. But I do think we need to be, it's, I think it's a, I'm sure it's a valuable skill. I think there are huge numbers of characteristics which obviously, as both speakers said, I think the MS can't nurture. And I think there must be, I need to be sold, to be honest, as a publisher, and I've just said this um, the benefits of an MA is an employer, to be frank. Okay, uh, I'll... yeah, just very quickly, I think it's important to understand if you do take an MA in publishing, you will still be competing for entry level jobs. It doesn't give you a buy across the first level of jobs. Um, the research we've done has indicated that, that people with um, an MA, uh, sort of rank with people with lots and lots of work experience, that they'll get, it'll get your CV onto the car and probably get you an interview. But it's, it's all the other things, you know, your flair, your creativity, your ability to think on your feet in an interview, that, that will, it, it isn't a guarantee of a job, it's what you add to it yourself. Okay, Michael. Um, yes. Uh, um, to be quite honest, um, for me it makes absolutely no difference if I get a CV uh, from an MA student in publishing or not. Um, in fact, um, what really makes a difference for me is how you write the first email you send me. And it is quite impressive <laughs> how many uh, just fall immediately under the table there. Dear Sir or Madam, please find and close my CV. And then various variations on that. Um, now, I always think, I mean, what, and, and that I think partly can only teach you work experience is to write, for example, research the name, of course, but then also give two or three compliments. You know, what are you, who are you actually addressing rather than immediately saying, I, I like that fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Over and over 
again. Okay, um, I think we're going to take three more.